<laughs> hello, hey. hello, hello. Welcome back, friends. So glad to be with you this Monday night. Live. Monday, Monday. Hi. Hi. How you doing? You okay? I'm okay. You all, you all right? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all right. You all right? All right. We're going to be hanging out with you guys for the next hour, answering as many questions as we can. Uh, <clears throat> we've got a few updates, a few announcements, so make sure and stick with us till the bitter end. You never know what's going to come out of my mouth and definitely not. This one I'm sleep so, deprived too, so that makes yeah. it even more fun. All right. Bonnie Blue's cutting teeth, and she decides to really talk about it about 3 30 a.m. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. It's a good time. It's it's the best. Partying to the break of dawn, but not in the way that is fun. You know? It's the best. It's the best. I get to wake up at 3 a.m. every day of my life. I love it. <laughs> to a screaming baby. All right. <laughs> Mary S. It's her first live. Welcome, hey, Mary. Hey, welcome, Mary. If you're new, first time you've ever caught one of our lives, type new in the comments right now. Don't be shy. I want to see how many new people we got. I got mm. some questions. You got some questions over there? Uh, you go for it, babe. All right. Sama, hi from Montana. Been carnivore for two years. Lost 130 pounds. Wow. Still got more weight to lose, but I've noticed my varicose veins are really pronounced. Any ideas uh, how to get rid of them? So since you have much less fat under your skin, subcutaneous fat, any existing varicose veins that you have are going to be more prominent appearing because your skin is thinner now. And uh, tiny spider veins will very often resolve, go away on keto or carnivore. But if you have the, the big ropey varicose veins, you're probably going to have to go see a vascular specialist and have a little minor procedure done to get rid of those. They're not dangerous, but if you don't like the way they look, then you need to get them fixed. Michelle Renee, Star Lily. Welcome. <clears throat> Al Tahoe, age 66. Al Tahoe. Al Tahoe. Al Tahoe. Al Tahoe. Oh, sorry. Al. <laughs> age 66 years, 5'10, 146 pounds, cholesterol 226, LDL 99, triglycerides 56, HDL 96. Taking niacin, K2, D3, mag. My question, elevated LDL is expected with carnivore in about one-third of people. About two-thirds of people don't have elevated LDL cholesterol on a carnivore keto diet. Angiogram found some atherosclerosis. Continue with niacin. Uh, it's not going to hurt you to take the niacin. If you don't flush or have hot sweats, it's fine to keep taking that. Whether it's going to protect you from heart attack or not, that's another story, but it's not going to hurt you to take it. We've got it. a lot of first-timers in the house. I know. Also, Al, Al Tahoe, Tahoe lost 120 pounds. No more sleep apnea, no more asthma, no more hypertension, no more prediabetes, no more visceral fat, no more tendonitis, no more arthritis, no more gout, no more, di no more diverticulitis, no more internal hemorrhoids, uh, and colorectal cancer. No RXs and no NSAIDs. I feel 20 again. Huzzah! Huzzah! Oh, that no, sounds that's... like Al Tahoe's eating a proper human diet to me. <laughs> To make all those chronic conditions go away. That's pretty cool. Oh, Roger Rabbit, I saw your comment. I was going to answer your question, but you didn't ask a question. You just commented that you haven't got a single question answered yet. So next time, just type a question and I'll answer it. Uh, also, please try. I know you get excited because we do a countdown. But wait until we're in here to ask your question just to make sure we don't miss it. We try really hard not to. We're trying but, to catch up. Yeah. Jennifer, what do you think about residual cholesterol as an indicator of heart risk, total cholesterol, LDL, HDL minus 25.3? Uh, residual cholesterol is something that's becoming very popular for influencers out there on podcasts and videos to talk about. Uh, but there's not much research to really support that as a viable, uh, true marker for your risk for heart attack and stroke. So I would keep my triglycerides and my HDL and my A1C and my C-peptide and fasting insulin. I'd keep those all normal by eating a proper human diet. And then we'll figure out about residual cholesterol with some more meaningful research. Brian, take it away, woman. Give me my water. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I had your water. Uh, Brian lost 42 pounds in the last six months, mostly triple B and E. Triglycerides down from 400 to 97. A1C from 6.3 to 6.1. Still getting better. Uh, thanks for using science, good humor, and persistence to fight for what's right. And for you guys who don't know, triple B and E stands for beef, 
But a bacon and egg. And we have an announcement. Keep on making. Bacon. Is it making a ribbon? Beef but a bacon. <laughs> oh, announcement. Yeah. So uh, we in the group. So Darkberry has a private community. It's a Mighty Network community. And the link is in the description. In there, we do live Q&As. And I do live Q&As every single day, Monday through Friday. I'm also running challenges. We just are fixing, we're finishing up the keto board challenge tomorrow. And then we're starting beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. So if that is something you're interested in, you can sign up. It's just $5. You can join higher levels if you want, but you get access to the challenge for the $5 level and an extra Q&A with this dude over here and other, other little perks. Uh, but if you want to do this with some guidance, I will be in there Monday through Friday, every day doing check-ins. I will have handouts, workouts, well, not workouts, worksheets. You can do workouts too. Workouts your brain. <laughs> and answering questions every day to keep you guys in it to win it. If you're in the group right now and you're having fun, put it in the comments. Yes. Who all is a member of our, our private group right now? So if you want to do the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge, there's a link down in the show notes that says join our community for more info or to learn more. That's, that's it. It's a super quick sign up. It's five bucks a month. And I promise you that's going to be money well spent, much better than that last copay you spent at the doctor or the pharmacy. One more announcement. Yes. How many minutes in our way? Well, I'll wait. There's another kind of little surprise. Oh, okay. Announcement. Well, I'm not pregnant before anybody gets that idea in their head. I mean, you'll have to wait around for the announcements. You could be. I mean, you don't know. <laughs> Phaedra? Can you overeat on carnivore? I'm new. Awesome. Good question. I'm glad you're new. Welcome. You're at the right place. So if you're trying to overeat, then obviously it's possible. So if you are if you join, sign up for the hot dog eating contest at the county fair and you just gorge yourself on hot dogs, you can overeat. Yes, that's for sure. But if you listen to your hunger signals and you listen to your satiety signals, then one of the most beautiful things about a proper human diet that free so many people from the shackles of addiction and from disordered eating is that you don't have to count calories. You don't have to portion control because think about it. Your body knows when it needs food. It also knows when you've had enough food, unless you're eating highly processed, addictive junk, then your body's confused. It's high. It's on crack. It doesn't know. It can't, it can't give you any feedback. It just says, no, I think we need some more Doritos. Yeah. Get some more Doritos. But if you're eating real food, that doesn't happen. And so you actually get to hear the satiety signal when it says, Phaedra, honey, that's enough. You're done. You're full. And then you can stop eating. That's how every other mammal on the planet does it. And that's how we can do it, too, if we're eating a species appropriate diet. Thank you, Caress. Desert Rose. Most people do not recover from palatal myoclonus, but do I have a chance on carnivore? Uh I don't, I don't know about complete recovery, but I think that you are, you, you could be very hopeful that your symptoms are going to become less severe by eating a proper human diet. Uh, surely your doctor is giving you some handouts and maybe some websites to read about this. This is a very, very rare condition, and I'm sorry you're having to go through this. Um, you think yours is from TMJ that worsened by a blow to the jaw. Could be, could be. Hopefully this is temporary. But uh, definitely eating highly processed inflammatory junk foods not going to help it at all, right? So I would opt for eating a proper human diet. Patrick, Dr. Saladino tells us it is best to steer clear of bacon as the linoleic acid in their feed stores in their fat. What are your thoughts on this? I love bacon and prefer to keep it in my diet if I can. So uh, the linoleic acid of pork is definitely it's higher than beef. There's no doubt. Uh, also, chicken is higher than beef. Uh, does that mean you should avoid all pork for the rest of your life? No, it doesn't. It means just uh, eat pork. It's fine. Uh, because here's the thing. Linoleic acid in the highly processed junk food is 20 to 50 times higher than it is in pork. And the vast majority of people, if they'll just cut out the junk food and the processed crap, their intake of linoleic acid goes down so low that the, the tiny amount in pork is inconsequential. So enjoy your bacon and your pork belly and your pork chops and your ribs, your pork ribs. And yeah. your bacon fat. 
and your bacon fat. Save, mm -hmm. save the bacon grease. Mitchell, are there any medication brands that do not use cellulose capsules, or is the amount so small that I don't I don't have to worry about it? I, it's a tiny amount, Mitchell. It is cellulose, uh, but it's ground up cellulose, so it's not. It, it is cellulose, like is in plants, but it's completely pulverized, so you don't have to worry about it getting clogged up like cellulose can in the gastrointestinal system. And if you're just taking a few capsules, a prescription or supplement it's probably irrelevant. I wouldn't worry about it. All I right. don't know of any brands that don't use. Yeah, I think that's kind of ubiquitous. Yeah. Welcome new member to the channel. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Sharon. Jerry. How do you get rid of the post drone stage of a migraine? I have extreme dizziness. So some of the FDA approved medications for treating migraines will help with the post drone but most of them don't help that much. Um, the best way to, to take care of the migraine post-drome is to just not have the migraine in the first place or to have one that's so mild that you don't have the post syndrome. Uh, I've got a YouTube video on this channel about mm -hmm. migraines and how you can adjust your diet to make them much, much less common and much less severe. But I don't know of any medicines or any supplement or anything that once you're in the post stage, that's going to make it go away. Sorry, but I'd much rather you just prevent them to start with. I feel like that's going to get knocked over. <clears throat> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Laura, eight months intermittent fasting, three months strict ketovore, 59 years old, lost 60 pounds, 15 to go, three months of diarrhea, then taking oxbile. I don't have a gallbladder. So <clears throat> if you remember back to the, the page you signed before you basically giving the surgeon permission to take out your gallbladder, one of the possible side effects is lifelong diarrhea. It literally says that on the sheet of paper. And the hospital still got a copy of that. If you don't believe me, you can go ask for a copy that you signed. And it's, it says that. Chronic diarrhea. That can be a lifelong complication of having your gallbladder taken out. Ox bile supplement may help with this. Um, it sounds like that, that you're much, much healthier. If you've had diarrhea for three solid months and it's very watery, not just loose, but, you know, the squirts. Go see your doctor and get a get a stool culture for oven parasites and a microscopy and see if there's maybe something else going on unrelated to your diet. You're awfully quiet this evening, my love, Am my I? moon, my stars. <laughs> Oliver, when I stand up quickly, I don't see. Am I dehydrated? Only five days in and taking electrolytes. What to do, doctor? Yeah. So first of all, this sounds like near syncope. You're almost passing out when you stand up. Uh, first and foremost, keep in mind, this may have nothing to do with your diet. You may have a medical condition. You probably need to see your doctor for this and get some stuff checked out. Just That's in number case. One. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, make sure you're getting plenty of salt and make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes. As you transition, you're almost assuredly not dehydrated if you're drinking water when you are thirsty and drinking until you're not thirsty anymore. That's that's all you have to do to not be dehydrated. It's not complicated. <laughs> Robin says, save the bacon fat, save the world. 100%. I <laughs> love it. Don't that's you a dare. If, if you guys, if you pour out the <clears throat> bacon grease, we're not friends. Whoa, Nellie had influenza A for a month. Dang. Ear infection, still no hearing after antibiotics and prednisone meds caused me to gain weight. My body just won't release these pounds I've gained. How long for meds to reverse? So it's just going to, it's very easy to gain weight when you're taking steroids and antibiotics. That's why uh, farmers of cheap chicken actually give them antibiotics to help them gain weight quicker. And so, yeah, the combination of antibiotics and prednisone, you can put on some weight. Unless you were sick, uh, it's going to take a while. It might take weeks. It might take a month. It's hard to know. Everybody's different. 2,700 watching. Can we get it up to 3,500 tonight? Y'all, share this, this video. Have you, have you thumbed it? Give it a good thumbing. Give it a good thumbing. And share, share it. it. And make sure you're subscribed. If you're not able to comment during the live, make sure you're subscribed right. to the you gotta channel. you got to subscribe. Even For if you think that you're subscribed, make sure. Yep. Because it has been, it yep. has happened before where yep. people get unsubscribed. Trey, yeah. are gallstones reversible with the proper human diet or is surgery removal the only option once stones have formed. So if you have gallstones and they're not giving you any problem, you don't have pain, severe pain, you have no reason to have your gallbladder taken out. Millions of people in the United States alone have gallstones and they have no idea.
because they have no pain. So we have had many anecdotal reports of people saying, hey, after six months of keto or a year of carnivore, my previous gallstones are now gone. We've heard that many, many times. There's several gallbladder flush routines on uh, for free on the Internet. You can look up. You could try some of those. I don't think they're probably going to help. Uh, but I think if you're eating a, a diet full of healthy fats, that's going to help your gallbladder to liquefy and get rid of those. But please don't have your gallbladder taken out just because you have gallstones. Hey, Kevin, thank you. Anastasia. Doctor, I started carnivore seven days ago. Ironically, my blood sugar, my blood sugar has been high, although I have been in ketosis for three days. How can this be? Yeah, this happens many times when you switch to a, a diet that's 100% protein and fat. Uh, usually it's the morning blood sugar that's a little higher than you expected it to be. What you'll do, Anastasia, is after you've been on this diet for 90 days, you're going to go see your doctor and you're going to get an A1C check. That's a test. You're going to get a fasting insulin, get your triglycerides and your HDL. And that's going to tell the true tale of whether your blood sugars the being elevated is a concerning or if it's physiological. Is it time for an announcement? I think so. Announce away. I have a very exciting thing to tell you guys. Granny Berry, are you watching? No, because I'm fixing to talk about you. Are your ears burning? So, those of you who know Granny Berry, you may or may not know this, but she makes quilts. Hand stitched, no machine work, beautiful, I mean, timeless pieces. They're gonna, they last forever. We have three or four that she's made for us and the kids. And she, and she has just been, how long has she been making quilts? For my entire life. I can remember when I was four years old at my great grandmother's house, granny would have a quilt up, take up the entire bedroom in the yeah. frame. <laughs> and I would, she'd be quilting and I would want to quilt. So she would thread me up a needle and I'd get up there and I'd make stitches about this long. You know, <laughs> look like an inchworm going across the quilt. And then I would get tired and I'd go outside and play. And she picked them. Well, she'd just take them out. But she right. didn't, I didn't know that for years. You thought you were doing something. I thought I was helping. And I'd be like, Granny, remember when I used to help? She's like, yeah, I took all your stitches out. They were they were terrible. So yeah. there is, is a quilt. It's a queen size quilt. It's beautiful. And it is listed on Etsy. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, which is at Nisha underscore Salisbury, it's, the link is over there in my stories, and I'll put it in the show notes after this is over. But if you are someone who wants a beautiful piece Handmade. of, like, the hardest thing that you can possibly make, probably, I mean, it's huge. It's queen size. And I bet Dr. Barry would even autograph 100%. something to put in there. And 100%. you can go purchase that right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I'll link it. Yeah. Uh, carb crusher, A1C down from 5.8 down to 5.2. So you've reversed your prediabetes, carb crusher. Well done. Down 50 pounds <laughs> since August. Total cholesterol, 406. Triglycerides, 67. HDL, 71. LDL, 328. Wish my doctor understood. I asked her for research supporting a high cholesterol causes heart disease. Very good, carb crusher. And also on my YouTube videos on here about cholesterol, I have research studies that you can print out and take to your doctor. And many doctors, they're, they're eager to learn. They just don't know better yet. And so when you take them a study from a peer-reviewed journal, they're like, holy crap, I've never seen this study. I didn't know about this. You might teach your doctor. Oh, but Granny Berry is selling this, not me. So any yeah, money yeah, yeah. that comes 100 out of, of it the money goes to Roger Granny Berry. Granny Berry. Yeah. YouTuber man, YouTube man, do you think you can completely get rid of HS with carnivore? So uh, hydradenitis supertiva. I don't think you're going to get rid of your propensity because you have a little bit of a genetic propensity. What is HS? It, hydradenitis supertiva. Okay. Yeah, I thought I did that. Already. Did you? I think so. Yeah. But so what you're going to do is you're going to completely alleviate the symptoms. And for all practical purposes, it's going to be gone as long as you remain on a proper human diet. Now, if you stray off and get back into the high carb, inflammatory, hyperinsulinemic junk, it's going to come back. OK, you're always going to have the predisposition to have HS, but you don't have to suffer from it if you eat a proper human diet. Good question. Frank. I've lost 35 pounds of carnivore and blood tests came out with high LDL. That happens in about a, one third of people. I told my doctor I'm not worried. And he mentioned uh, 
the yes, the oxidized LDL. Which, what is and can you check? Yeah, he can. There's a test for oxidized LDL that he can check. Uh, that may be a better marker for heart disease than just regular LDL cholesterol. Still, more research needs to be done on that. Suki, Suki, one of my favorite names. Is it normal for my stomach to hurt? I just started carnivore again. My doctor told me to stop the high fat. Can I fix the discomfort? I would just slowly transition to carnivore, Suki. You don't have to go 100% overnight. Oh. Hey, are we back? Are we back now? I have no idea what just happened. Yeah, we're <laughs> okay, back. We're okay. Back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We only lost a thousand people. Oh. Thanks a lot, StreamYard. Um, yeah, so uh, here we are. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Jam says Saladino froze the stream with fruit and honey. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, Suki. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I would say transition a little slower. There's no reason to rush through it if you're having some stomach problems. Um, you know, there's no race. You're not racing anybody. Just go a little bit slower. Maybe go ketovore and uh, then carnivore or triple B and E. Yep. And see if that, that helps. Sorry, guys. I don't know. Yeah, I have no I idea probably what probably also lost every single for the Super Chats, too. Yeah, I don't see any. Great. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Huzzah, we're back. Know. We're back. We're back. Text everybody and tell them we're back. <laughs> we're not lost. This is so annoying. Uh, okay. And listen to this. Ann Allison, I went to my doctor and asked him to give me an A1C test, and he refused. He said that test is no good. I just fired him. I have an appointment with Dr. Sivis now. That's great. This is one of the options you guys have. If your doctor says something completely ignorant like this, fire your doctor. Yeah, you have every right. Absolutely. All right. I'm very sorry, guys. I don't I don't know. Here. Let's, is carnivore Danielle. okay for a liver disease? Absolutely. The thing that destroys livers, two things, three things. Alcohol, of course. You probably already know that. Too much acetaminophen or ibuprofen any of the over-the-counter pain medicines. And then th third is carbohydrates and fructose. These are the things that will give you non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, if you're not an alcohol drinker, you can still get fatty liver, which can turn into NASH, which can turn into cirrhosis. Now, if you have one of the hepatitises or if you have some other liver disease, then what you definitely don't want to do is be assaulting your liver with too many carbohydrates and too much fructose. And definitely you can't drink alcohol. Thanks, Kimber. Jason, is there a product I can purchase for 150? Oh, there is a product I can purchase yeah. for a microbiome test. Is that another gimmick? Yeah. Is What was the brand name of the one I did? Can't Biome? I, I got one of these and it was about 150 bucks. And yeah. the information I got from it, basically it was a supplement commercial. They're like, okay, we found some stuff in your poop. And now you need, you need to take all these supplements and we all, oh, we sell those. And then also we do meal plans too, to help you with your gut microbiome. It was literally a commercial that I paid $150 for. It was worthless. So I'd probably keep my money and just eat meat. Yeah. Uh, peace. Carnivore fixed gut pain after oh, 21 years <laughs> as a, a vegan or vegetarian. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Peace home. I'm so glad that you gave it a shot. I know for, for many vegans and vegetarians, it's like feels unethical. It feels wrong. It feels repulsive. But I promise you, if, if you guys got any family members or friends who are vegan or vegetarian and they're having chronic diseases, they need to try keto or car ketovore or carnivore. And once they get over that initial, they're going to be happy they did it. Sama, should you avoid all sugars, carbs, fibers, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, oils, and go full ketovore or carnivore and stay there to help with no reoccurrence? Yeah, and so if you want to have no reoccurrence whatsoever, I'd probably just stick with carnivore. 
but 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 then you can also use carnivores and elimination diet. And this goes for any chronic condition any of you guys have. Use carnivore to get it in remission or to reverse it or to get it where the symptoms are so mild that it's almost not there. Then you can, once a week, you can say, okay, I'm going to try some cashews and see what happens. A week after that, you can try some broccoli, see what happens. Uh, never would I put back in grains. Never would I put back in vegetable oils. Never would I put back in sugar. Those things are, are addictive and they're not part of a proper human diet, but you can branch out and try some nuts, try some berries, try some veg, and see if it flares it up. If it does, that goes on your do not eat list. YouTube man, is HS, HS similar to all other skin conditions? If someone with another skin condition stayed on diet and drifted back to high carb, would those symptoms come back? Yes, exactly. Because many of these skin conditions are just symptoms of chronic hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. And once you take care of those two things, this skin condition that you thought was just a permanent part of you, so all it goes away unless you start to poison yourself again with inflammatory high carb foods. It's basically a symptom of poisoning. That's what a lot of the skin conditions are. JM says, uh, Asians, I think is what he meant to say, ate rice for centuries. So what is causing type 2 diabetes yeah, now? So they probably had type 2 diabetes and fatty liver the whole time, but nobody checked that stuff back then. Okay. Also keep in mind that in years past, in many Asian countries, food scarcity was a very real thing. Getting even enough to eat to not be malnourished was a very real thing. And that'll keep you very slender. You look, you look just like somebody on the cover of Cosmopolitan, but you're starving. And you literally don't have enough food to put in the pot every day for you and your family. I don't think that's an ideal situation. I'd much rather eat until I'm comfortably stuffed and still might develop type 2 diabetes. Child of God, I have gallbladder attacks sometimes. Ultrasound showed no gallstones. No gallstones. And what is causing these attacks? My doctor just shrugs. Yeah. I've been keto since September and carnivore since January. Beautiful. So this should get better and go away. You've got one of two things. You've been, And so if you've been scanned, we know there's no tumor. We know there's no uh, gallstones. You've either got gallbladder wall dysfunction, which means your gallbladder was floppy and weak because you were eating a low-fat diet, or you had gallbladder sludge, which uh, doesn't show up as easily on a scan as a stone, but it can still temporarily clog the duct. But if you've been eating uh, keto since September, you've probably strengthened up the gallbladder wall and gotten rid of the sludge, and you probably shouldn't have any more problems. Luz, uh, my sorry, Luz. SC was deleted. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My daughter, granddaughter is 16 months. She's currently drinking goat milk but has eczema and is very constipated. Would you recommend A2 over goat milk? Why do you think that it's the milk? Is, is she just drinking goat she, milk yeah. or is she, is eating she eating other things? That's right, yeah. yeah. Because it's more likely that it's something yeah. else she's consuming that's contributing yeah. to the eczema and the yeah. constipation. Yeah. Infants and toddlers' gastrointestinal system, their, their intestines are very tiny and very fragile. Please make sure that your granddaughter is not eating any fiber. Fiber in a very little one like this can lead to all kinds of problems. Like cereals. Yes, yeah, cereals, the little crunchy things, all the little cute Gerber snacks. Please, all that's that's probably what's causing the eczema and the constipation. It's probably not the goat milk at all. All goat milk is A2 mm -hmm. casein. Okay. It's actually what it's better than the A2. Cow's Cow milk. milk yeah. Goat milk I, is I think the so. best digested yep. besides breast yep. milk yep. for babies. It's what your granddaughter's eating. It's not the goat milk. Yep. Right. I agree 100%. Yeah. Uh, okay. What? Oh, you I have one? I, no. Okay. I thought I saw something. That's what I thought, too. <sighs> Sam, my wife has a diagnosis of Crohn's and Crest. Scleroderma is beginning to manifest. She gets out of breath with minimal exertion. Would ketovore or carnivore be best? Doctor wants her own statins. Sam, statins not going to help her at all. Number one, number two, she, I mean the the Crest syndrome and Crohn's, and she's starting to show evidence of scleroderma, which is part of the Crest syndrome. She's got to go carnivore. She needs one hundred percent carnivore, uh, and and. You know, on her anniversary and her birthday and your birthday, she can cheat with keto. But on a daily basis to keep those nasty boogers at bay, she needs to be carnivore. Absolutely. Kevin, second attempt. Sorry, right. Kevin. Uh, was about tobaccoless nicotine. Nicotine gum. Yep, yep, yep. Any risk for heart disease? Studies seem mixed on this. Yeah. And so I've, I've, I actually have a video on this channel about vaping versus smoking. 
And so any of you guys out there, if you're currently smoking, please watch my vaping versus smoking video. I would 100 times rather you vape than smoke. Now, did I just say that vaping is good? No. I didn't say that, did I? I said it's way less bad than smoking tobacco. And so any of the, the, the tobacco-less nicotines, the lozenges, the gum, the inhalers, the any of that stuff is much less dangerous than cigarettes. It has no tar, doesn't have the other 1,000 chemicals that are created when you burn tobacco and paper and inhaled smoke. Uh, not ideal, not good but less bad. And so uh, when you start looking at the studies, they are, they're all about smoking cigarettes, all about tobacco. It's very hard to find a study that where they just gave somebody a nicotine lozenge five times a day and followed them for 10 years to see if they developed heart disease because most there's not many, enough people who do that to have statistical power for the study. Oh, are, are we? we? Two we? weeks after starting carnivore diet, my bowel movement basically stops or seems very lazy. Is this normal and expected? So when you're eating a carnivore diet, you're eating pure nutrition. There's no, there's no waste. There's no junk that has to come out. Whereas if you're eating lots of shredded wheat and lots of broccoli and kale and spinach, you're going to have a ton of fiber that you're going to have to poop out. And so many people, when they go on the carnivore diet, they notice that the volume, the amount of their poop gets anywhere from 50 to 90% less than the amount of poop that they used to poop back when they pooped a lot of poop. So this is not, a, this is not constipation. If you're not having pain, bleeding, straining, cramping, that's, then you don't have constipation. You're just pooping less because what you're eating now is pure nutrition, which sounds to me like that's the way it should be. Who wants to poop three ginormous poops a day? <laughs> Some people really and have stinky that. gas in between. There are people out there who think that's a marker of good health. It's like, what if I what if I walked around and just was belching blah, 50 times a day and then I threw up three times a day? Would that be a sign of good health? No. Well, coming out the other end, that's not a sign of good health either. If you make ginormous stinky poops and fart all the time, you don't have good gut health. I'm sorry. So that that's what's going on with that. I'll be right back. Okay. Little Sister Sue, uh, today's chemistry results, cholesterol 289, LDL 210, HDL 68, triglycerides 57, uh, cholesterol HDL ratio 4.3, triglyceride HDL ratio 0.84, see doc tomorrow. If he wants statins, uh, we'll seek a new doctor. Yeah, I think I think with your triglycerides and your HDL, that'd be a good plan because they're beautiful. Angelic Annihilator. One time you or Nisha said intense exercise can flare autoimmune disease. Why is that? And what would be the solution for one who likes to work out? Angelica and I later, I don't know about intense exercise. I think uh, chronic, chronic sustained exercise. That's going to that's gonna be the thing that really stresses your system and could uh, initiate an autoimmune flare. Uh, Mark Sisson calls it chronic cardio. And I think that's a great way to say it. Because it's not it's not natural to get on the treadmill and run for two hours. So, but if you want to do short bursts of high in, high intensity interval training, I think that's perfectly appropriate. It's probably not going to flare anything up. Walls, hello from Southern Indiana. I've been on key, carnivore keto for six months. My doctor warned me that my body may start to overproduce glucose. What do you think? I think your doctor needs to get his physiology book out. Where's my physiology book? I'll show you what it looks like. I can't, I don't see it anywhere. Where is that physiology book? About once every other day, I've got the physiology book out. I don't know where I left it because I'm reading it every day. Your doctor needs to, you need to either buy your doctor a physiology textbook or maybe they still have their old one and brush up on, on the glucose and insulin physiology because your doctor's obviously either forgot it or didn't learn it in the first damn place. Sarah. Do iodine levels need to be checked before taking a supplement? Is it easy to OD on iodine drops? So iodine levels can be checked. The, really the only reliable way to check it is to do a 24-hour urine collection for iodine. Just checking your serum iodine in blood work is not going to tell you anything useful. Uh, if you're using 2% Lugol's iodine and you're using one or two drops a day, then you're never going to overdose on it. OK, if you get a little too much iodine in your diet, say you went to the, the seafood restaurant and you ate 45 raw oysters 
that's a lot of iodine, right? You're just going to pee that extra iodine out if your body doesn't need it. Your body's kind of designed to use what it needs and then pee or poop the rest out. It's, it's really cool how it's designed. So, no, you're not going to overdose. Sama, should you avoid sugar, carbs, fibrous vegetables, nuts, seeds? I think we already did this one. Missed the name earlier. Uh, yeah, you should avoid sugars always. Carbs, there's no, you have no need of ever eating a carb. Fibrous vegetables, I mean, if you want your diverticulitis to flare up, eat lots of fiber or, or better take a fiber supplement because that'll flare it up quick. Nuts and seeds, not so much. That used to be the big thing that all doctors talked about but the research doesn't really bear that out. Uh, grain oils. I'm not sure what a grain oil is. So I, if you've got diverticulosis and you don't want to develop diverticulitis, I'd do ketovore or carnivore, and I would stick with it. That's what I would do. Thank you, Scott, very much. Ron. Uh, Ron, if you'll just put it, Ron Navy, if you'll just type your question in the comments, I will try to find it. Ron, I'm so sorry that it glitched on us like that. Aisha, will Medicare kick me out? I'm on disability if I refuse to take my statin. So there are a lot of people like this in this similar situation. So you don't want to take a statin, but your doctor prescribed it for you. So what do you do? Well, there's several ways you can do this. You can either take the prescription, throw it in the garbage, or you can go fill it at the pharmacy if Medicare wants to pay for it and then pour it down the toilet. Right. Uh, I, I worry, I would worry about polluting the environment by doing that. But if you take the statin and then you use the bathroom, you're still, it's going in the toilet. So either way, but, uh, some doctors will check up on you and make sure you fill the prescription. Some insurance companies will do that. So just go fill it at the pharmacy and find, find a, a friend of yours who's, you know, financially strapped and they can't afford theirs and just give yours to them if they still believe in taking them or pour them down the toilet because that's where they belong. Rianne, can eating keto carnivore get rid of fibroids? I actually have a fibroid video on this channel, Renee. Uh, I'm sorry, not Renee. Rianne? Rianne, yes. Uh, and so fibroids are almost certainly caused to grow by hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. And when you eat a diet that gets rid of those two things, the fibroid is either going to just freeze where it's at, just stick and not and stop getting larger. But in many, many cases, women have reported to us that they get their ultrasound once a year and the fibroids have actually shrunk, in some cases gone completely away. And uh, that's one of my, I've got many videos on this channel. So for all you guys, if you have a particular medical condition or medicine or way of eating, you're like, I wonder if Dr. Barry's got a video on that. The way you find out is go to YouTube and type in the search bar, Dr. Barry, and whatever the condition or medication is. So for example, Dr. Barry, fatty liver, Dr. Barry, metoprolol, Dr. Barry, statin, and then if I've got a video about that, it'll pop up and you can watch it and learn. All right. Tricia, question on Insure, clear pre-surgery drink. You some you something about it in one of your video, but I did not know which one. So basically everything made by the Insure company is, is crap, is junk. It's junk food. And so uh, you, I would, I would find something else that's actually uh, pureed real food to use. I would not, I would not give insure to my worst enemy. I don't think I have an enemy, but if I had one, I wouldn't give them insure. That's how bad it is. Shannon, I've been on carnivore since December of 22, and I'm down 44 pounds. Huzzah! I have over 200 more to go. You're on the right track, Shannon. Leg, feet swelling, almost gone. My question is, what meats and how often should I eat to maximize weight loss? So you should eat fatty cuts of meat. Try to eat. Uh, try to make the majority of the meat you eat beef, fatty cuts of beef, and it doesn't have to be the expensive cuts. You can get cheaper cuts, and you can pressure cook them, or you can do all the tricks that you can do on a stove or with a grill to make them more tender. But always get the fat. Tell them not to trim the fat off. You can have some chicken and have some pork. And definitely you can have plenty of, of fatty seafood as well. But fatty ruminant meat, sheep and, and, and cow, that seems to be the best for most people. Eat one or two meals a day, Shannon. And when you do eat a meal, eat until you're comfortably stuffed, until you cannot eat another bite. Then stop eating 
and then do not eat again until you're truly hungry again. And the weight loss will just continue. It's just that simple. Hi, you better? Hi, no. What's wrong with you? Um, you having chest pain? Yes. See, it's that cholesterol. That's it. No, it's, I know what it's from. What, Bonnie? Bonnie, and I got to get these things taken out. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jackie's Jinxed Journey. Be off metformin, gl uh, glimipiride, and pioglitazone in 25 days on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Sugar stay under 120 was 400 plus. Uh, still wants sugar. Hoping after 90, he'll change his mind. Oh, boyfriend off metformin, glipizide. Okay, gotcha. So make sure that he's that, that you're checking his blood sugar and make sure that you recheck his A1C after 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So you can see what the before was and now what the after is now. Okay. I missed the BF part. Russia de-implantification. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carol, after being on OMAD for about four months, I'm worried that I don't eat enough protein. Now difficult to go to 16-8 and consume a second meal. Any thoughts? Well, if you're not truly hungry, Carol, and you've still got stored fat to lose, uh, you can keep doing OMAD. Now, if you've reached your ideal body weight and your ideal body fat percentage, then if you feel like it, you can go back to uh, two meals a day. But Everybody listening, don't think that there's some scientific study that proved that three meals a day is the ideal amount of food or times times a day to eat for a human. Literally, that's never been proven. That is a marketing ploy that the big food companies came up with. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. What do you have for lunch? Hey, honey, what's for dinner? They literally made this simulacra of the proper way for humans to eat to make money, Okay. Uh, back in the in the Middle Ages, people very often ate one meal a day, pretty much their entire life. In some areas in the late Middle Ages, they would eat two meals a day. They would they would never eat breakfast; they'd eat lunch or dinner. Uh, this has been this way all over the world from the beginning of time. Our ancestors, thousands of years ago, might not eat for three or four days. It was called starving because they didn't kill anything. The human body is designed to withstand this. When you do eat, make sure you're eating adequate protein, Carol. Carnivore werewolf. That sounds like a question for you right there. Was vegan. Ugh, I know. For seven years. Lost about 30% of my muscle. Best advice for regaining that muscle. Yeah. Thanks for you too. All you uh, too. Welcome back, carnivore werewolf. I'm so glad that, that you were able to get over that mental barrier and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm supposed to eat meat. We're designed to eat meat. So you've lost 30% of your muscle because you weren't getting enough bioabsorbable, usable protein from the plants, you're going to have to really hit the fatty red meat and you're going to have to lift the heavy things, hit the red meat, hit the gym, and you will slowly but surely you'll gain back that muscle. TJ, carnivore since August, lost 65 pounds. A1C went from 6.8, which is type 2 diabetic, down to 5.5, which is normal. No. <laughs> normal tj reversed type 2 diabetes with a carnivore diet since august triglycerides 95 total cholesterol 288 hdl 65 ldl 204 yeah you're doing great tj keep it up i hope you're starting to teach your friends and family members because i i know that they can see the improvement in you not just in your weight but in your overall health that glow that glimmer that shimmer ain't no telling what tj looks like now when TJ walks in room, people are like, damn. Charles B.W. Zinc for prostate and help with teeth level. Teeth. Zinc. I'm trying to insert a word there that Charles, makes sense. Zinc is good for you. I've got a video on this channel about zinc-rich foods. Uh, if you guys want me to ask, ask answer your question, you have to ask a grammatically question correct question. I don't know what that means. Sorry, Charles. Sorry, Charles. Welcome, Sorry, Nana. Welcome. Cynthia, I just saw a video with Kelly and Emery's about eating low fat to lose fat. What do you think? I think I'll lower my fat intake and see. Kelly also has done several videos lately about how high fat 
has worked for her and she seems very happy with that as yeah. opposed to when she did lower fat so i encourage you to watch some more kelly's videos yeah and um do your own research yeah and, and so is good for women no human on the sure. planet needs to eat a low fat diet anybody who's recommending a low fat diet doesn't know what they're talking about now i mean that what they were talking about was having low fat days not just eating low fat yeah but so yeah. I, I prefer high fat yes. at least. So I want you to eat fat. adequate fat every day. Uh, you can eat high fat. That's fine. You can eat moderate fat. That's fine. But low fat, whoever tells you to eat low fat, they need to go back to the physiology book. Ghost hikers, wanderings, cholesterol up from 347 to 569, carnivore four months, HDL 90, booyah, LDL 451, triglycerides 124. That's normal. I'm 58 and 19% body fat. You, my friend, are a lean mass hyper responder. Uh, do an internet search for the term lean mass hyper responder. That's what you are. There's a new paper written about that recently. Your calcium score was zero. So we know that your heart arteries are squeaky clean. Keep doing what you're doing. So many people think that high cholesterol and high LDL means that you are destined. You're guaranteed a heart attack. Ghost, rider, ghost hiker is not going to have a heart attack any time in the next 10 or 15 years. His coronary artery calcium score is zero. Jennifer, 65-year-old female, I've lost 244 pounds. What are you guys in a competition tonight? Dang. Uh, <laughs> reverse, prediabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, pain gone from fibromyalgia, severe spinal stenosis, trigeminal neuralgia, and more. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you for, for taking a chance on this and saying, hey, I, I think this guy knows what he's talking about. This is what I live for right here, this comment. Uh, not just the weight loss. That's great. 244 pounds. That's more than some people weigh. She lost that much. and then, But what I'm really happy about is the prediabetes is gone. High blood pressure is gone. All these things are gone. That's, 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 that's my calling is to help people like Jennifer to do just that very thing. Well done, Jennifer. Eric, 44-year-old female, on and off keto for months, total cholesterol 236, LDL 181, triglycerides 151, that's a little high, A1C 5.3, that's very good, TSH 2.66, that's okay, C peptide 6.1, that's okay. Why is the PEP high, but A1C is not? Because you're still eating too many carbohydrates for you personally, Eric. Uh, and we see that in your triglycerides being a, above 150, that's still too high. And then we see that with a C peptide that's 6.1. And it, so your, your insulin is keeping your A1C down, but you can't keep the C peptide or your insulin level down because you're still eating too many carbs. So stop the off and on keto and get on keto and stay on keto because keto is not a fad diet. It is the proper human diet. When you stray from keto, you're basically poisoning yourself with, with slow poison. Why would you want to do that? Stop that. Eat proper human diet food, and you'll have a normal triglycerides, and your C-peptide will come back down to normal. Ain't that right, darling? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got it? Six. Dr. Barry, my doctor, will not write into my medical record that my type 2 is in remission. He is not very supportive. Should I fire him and move on? What do you guys think that C actual should do in this case? So C actual had type two diabetes and now has an, a normal A1C and he wants type two diabetes to be taken out of his medical record, maybe for insurance reasons, maybe for work reasons. And his doctor, even though he no longer has type two diabetes, refuses to take that out of his chart. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments, what should six actual do with this doctor? Try to educate this doctor, fire this doctor's ass. What what should happen here? I mean, this this seems like something that why would a doctor have a problem with this? Look like the doctor would be proud. Like, wow, maybe I helped with that somehow. I don't know how, but maybe I did. I think you deserve a doctor who is supportive of and it, and who would be proud of you if you reversed a chronic disease. What kind of doctor doesn't want to document that that you reverse type two diabetes? Hi, Dios mío. Dios mío. I knew you were going to say that. <coughs> 3,600. We beat what I asked for. Y'all are amazing. Love it. Let's I go to 4,000. Share it again. I was going to say that. It's okay. I'll step back. I love you. Oh, God. 
Y'all, my birthday is this week. So if you want to wish me a happy birthday, go subscribe to my YouTube channel because that would be really happy. Go watch a few <laughs> videos. Hit that thumb a few times. That would be great. I'd appreciate it. That'd be so sweet. Al Romero. Hello, Dr. Barry. My wife is starting her carnivore journey. She says that her metabolism is slow. Maybe. She feels the, the food. She feels the food up to her neck with ordinary food and worse with red meat. Her doctor told her she has a metabolic syndrome. So are you saying that she feels like the food is backing up? Because that can absolutely happen, but that's going to happen. It's not because of the meat. It's because she probably has an esophageal stricture. She probably has gastritis. She probably has small, bowel, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's going to take a while for those things to heal. If she hasn't already had a scope with food backing up, she needs to have an EGD to look down in here and see what's going on. But she may have, if she needs to cut her meat up into tiny bites, if she needs to puree it for a week or two, get the red meat, the fatty red meat in her, get the eggs with the yolks in her and keep all of the fibrous, junky plants out of her mouth. Keep all the highly processed inflammatory junk food out of her mouth. This will start to heal, but that does need to be investigated. Hey, Kelly Kelly. Oh, God. <clears throat> I'm in a lot of pain right now. I'm sorry if I'm over here and I look really weird. I'm just, I'm hurting really. You sure it's not a heart attack from bacon and butter? I'm, here's what I, look, we're going to take a commercial break and talk about Nisha's boobs. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about your boobs. Okay. I have breast implants. Some of y'all know that. Some of you may not know that. I got them 10 years ago before I had an autoimmune disease and before I started eating this way. Anyways. That's probably one of the triggers that gave me an autoimmune disorder. Over the years, I've considered having them taken out. However, I got pregnant and I was breastfeeding. And then I went to a call. I was scheduled my consultation. And I got pregnant again. I'm currently breastfeeding. And recently, I have had a lot of pain <laughs> if I don't wear a bra. And I really enjoy not wearing a bra. Which I enjoy her TMI not wearing a bra probably, too. But that is just how yeah. it goes around here. I'm breastfeeding. It's just easier. And I'm having a lot of pain. So, um, Whenever I get done breastfeeding this baby, that will happen. And yes, I will document it. And yes, I will share it. And I'm actually fixing to do a video focused on implants, how I feel about them, do I regret it, why I haven't gotten taken out. You know, there's, <clears throat> I get questions all the time, but it is time. And I wish I could have them taken out right now. Like I'm, it's having, it's having, I would rip them out right now if I could. <laughs> that sounds messy. It hurts. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. Eight pounds lost in seven days. How do I get my flas fasting sugar down without Lantus and Novolog? I want off the insulin. Can I stop all insulin uh, with 16-8 or, or OMAD? So, Kelly, I want you to try to get a continuous glucose monitor if you can. Because as you come down off the carbs, you're going to have to going to have to really wean down the insulin pretty quickly or you're going to wind up with a low blood sugar and I don't want you to pass out and hit your head or something so either get a continuous glucose monitor or you're going to prick your finger seven eight nine times a day so that you can know what your blood sugar is doing because as you if you go beef butter bacon and eggs you're going to have to really really cut the insulin very very quickly and I don't want you to pass out from low blood sugar but that's how you get off the insulin. If you're a truly a type 2 diabetic, after a few weeks or a few months of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you won't need any insulin at all. You'll have a normal A1C. Isn't that awesome to think about? Thank you, Peggy. Oh, Christopher. Christopher. Best, Christopher. Best remedy for peritonsillar abscess. Go see your doctor and probably get it lanced. It hurts. It's nasty. But uh, peritonsillar abscesses, they can be uh, concerning. They can, they, they're, they're very big things that live behind the tonsils, and you definitely don't want that abscess rupturing back there into some of your great vessels. So go see your doctor. That's what I would do for that. Re Rob, thanks for all you both do. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Rob. Thanks for sharing the message and sharing our videos. That helps us to help I more people. Brushwork, have you asked several questions tonight? Brushwork. Hey, Dr. Ken, I'm 36 year old male, six foot three, 150 pounds. I want to try this diet and wondering if this is something I should do. I have a really fast metabolism. Any advice? So, keto, ketovore, and carnivore, listen, everybody, they are not weight loss diets. They are weight optimization diets. 
we've seen many people who are underweight actually gain weight on keto, keto born carnival. When you're eating a proper human diet, your body's just going to tend to gravitate towards your ideal body weight. Okay. So 150 pounds and six foot three is very, very thin, very slender. And so it wouldn't surprise me, brush work, if you eat fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk and, and eat until you're comfortably stuffed. I would eat two meals a day. There's no reason for you to do all that. Uh, you can eat three meals a day. You're not going to lose any more weight. I promise you. I want to check back with me next week and give me an update. Ron Navy been taking mag oxide for years, but have symptoms of low mag. Yeah, magnesium oxide is the is the most horribly absorbed of all the magnesiums. You, you're pooping out about 90% of the mag oxide, Ron. I know your doctor prescribed it for you. That's the one that doctors like to prescribe. It is the least effective one. So throw that in the garbage and either get yourself some magnesium citrate or some magnesium glycinate or threonate. Uh, the mag oxide is not going to help get your magnesium levels up. Yeah. Sorry about sorry about the things that doctors do and prescribe. Hey, carnivorous me. yay, carnivorous me. To her channel. The, yeah, you guys, if you want to see an amazing journey of somebody Woo. on the way back to best health, carnivorous me. She's she's going to be on the low carb cruise. You want to meet this girl? She's going to be on the low carb cruise. Love when it. is that? June. June right? 23. I think I'm pretty sure. Are you going to be at KetoCon too? Hope you are. I'd yes. love to meet yeah, you then. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see you. Teresa O says, join our awesome private community. We're going to be doing the beef butter bacon and eggs challenge in there. It's starting uh, February 1. First. February the 1st. And so if you need a community, if you need a tribe, if you need support, there's over 4,000 people in there right now waiting for you to sign up so they can take you by the hand and say, yeah, I had that same thing. It's better now. Let me tell you how I did it. So the challenge will be uh, starting on the 1st, and it's the whole month of February. I'm in there Monday through Friday every single day doing check-ins, and you have a course of materials to go through. So if you miss a day, you can always come back and look at the replays. I always save everything. It's always available for replay. Answer all your questions. If there's a layout, there are rules. It's very clear. I try to do a really good job making it, it as kiss as possible. Keep it simple. Super. Yeah. Trey's got a good question. <clears throat> Trey says, uh, about two and a half months into carnivore, I find that if I have a cheat day or two, my dandruff comes back and I get a rash on my chest and neck. Is this common? Yeah. And so let's use an analogy. If you're in New York City and the snow there, the, the snow plows pushed it, it's just dirty, filthy snow and somebody spills their coffee on it. Can you even really tell? You're like, it just looks dirty. But if you're out in the pristine wilderness and there's a blanket of pure white snow and somebody spills their coffee, you can see it from a mile away. Okay. That pristine, pure snow is how Trey's physiology is eating a carnivore diet. It is pure, pure and pristine and uninflamed. And so when he does cheat for a day or two and eat some junk, Trey, what are you doing? Then, yeah, <clears throat> you're pouring a cup, cup of coffee on pure, pristine snow. It's going to be blatantly obvious that you did that. And you're going to have you're going to have feedback from your body. And that's basically your body saying, hey. Do you have a banner that has a, the community? Yes. Let's have that going. Oh, on. yeah. There it is. There's the Okay. Little, so yeah. at the bottom of the screen, it's scrolling. <clears throat> says drberry.com slash community. That's where you can sign up for the group. It comes... The challenge comes with your group membership. You don't have to do anything extra. So, yeah, this is why I never argue with people when they when they call me out or try to say I'm wrong. Subtleties thought you were wrong, but kept watching and finally took your advice. Two weeks on keto, fasting sugar down to 96 from 230. Thanks so much for what you do. And I just uh, I, I just had a, a um, registered dietitian try to nail me on YouTube. He did a response video to one of my videos Ooh. about how ignorant, how Juicy. stupid, how profane. And I just put in the comments, keep reading and studying, my friend, and you, our views will align one day soon. Because I'm not, I'm not making this shit up. I'm not pulling this out of my booty. This is physiology. This is, this is biology. This is very simple stuff. When you just shed your preconceived notions, you just say, okay, let's think about this. What does this species need to eat and what does it need to avoid? 
it becomes very simple. So uh, thank you, Subtleties, for hanging around and giving me a chance. Bushworks wants to know when your new book is coming out. Uh, it'll be here when it gets here. We don't have a date. Yeah, my ADHD man. It yeah. is. It is super close to being. It's done. super close. It is. But so really now that that we're we're in the editing, like it, it's that's the, the hardest part. The first draft honest. is written. Now I got to go back and start editing and changing and that that like I literally just had almost had a panic attack just thinking <laughs> about it. But I am going to sit down and do it. Writing books is hard. It is so hard. I had no idea. I thought, you just sit down and write a book. Well, what's, you know. Oh, we God. didn't talk to each other. Then. The first book he wrote, what, for a year and a half? A year. Yeah, like, at least a year. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't. I, could. I just had to be like this mm -hmm. all the time. It, it was not fun. It was awful. Ron Navy again. Not that bad. Hey, Ron Navy. Doing carnivore, but went in for a heart cath. It was clear, but got... HM and broke out in hives on my neck, head, stomach. Uh, ER put me on six day steroids. Sugars have been in the upper 200s. I take the last one on Wednesday. So it'll it'll take a week or two, Ron. And you'll see it, it's kind of going down slow, but sure. It'll get back to normal. So don't worry about it. That You probably needed that, even though it did spike your blood sugar. Sorry that happened to you. But I'm glad your heart arteries were clear on your carnivore diet. Thank you, Cheryl. S. Jillian lost 93 pounds on keto plus intermittent fasting. How to know when to stop. So when should you stop eating a proper human diet, S. Jillian? That's a trick question. Think she knows? I think she does because she, what she said makes it seem like she has a good idea of when she should yeah, stop. you should never stop eating a proper human diet. Now, at some point, you may not need to fast Either as long. Intermittent fasting, I think, is what you Yeah, yeah. At some point, when you get close to your ideal body weight, you can probably slow down the intermittent fasting. Uh, when I plateau and can't break through, that's when you might up the intermittent fasting is when you're plateaued after three months She's and can't break through. five foot tall, 139 pounds. So. Yeah, five foot. So you still got a little bit okay. to go. A little yeah. bit to go, but that's not terrible. I guarantee you, you what your weight is better than 90% of... Uh, 56-year-old females who are postmenopausal. Keep up the great work, S. Jillian. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, guys. Yes. Thank you. I will be 37. Wow. <laughs> Ashley, on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and OMAD, having trouble digesting protein. I do have a history of IBS. Any suggestions? Thank you for all you do. So my question is, how do you know you're having trouble digesting protein? Why do you think that's true? Are you throwing up? the meat are you what what exactly is happening so meat is one of the easiest things for the human body to digest the stomach is where the the vast majority of digesting meat happens typically by the time you get halfway through your small intestine meat is already completely digested and turned into liquid so i unless you're taking an acid blocker like protonics prolisec zantac acid you're you're not having trouble digesting protein if you have a normal functioning stomach you're digesting protein if it's coming from meat and eggs you're not going to have a, a problem digesting the protein tanya t 61 year old with very dry eyes will phd reverse it yes it's going to improve that it's going to lessen it and the, and you're you're also going to really focus on getting lots of omega-3 fatty acids and i've got a video on this channel about omega-3 rich foods and you're going to make sure you're eating foods with plenty of vitamin a and vitamin e and here's a hint for you tanya carrots don't have any vitamin a neither the spinach and if that just blew your mind, I've got a video about which foods actually contain vitamin A. But that'll help your dry eyes tremendously. Are you going to keep going? I, I, got, I got to get this one more. Tabitha, one more. Okay. been keto for six years, lost 30 pounds, started carnivore January 1, diarrhea every day. I have no doctor, no insurance, uh, type 2 insulin dependent diabetes since 2004 with gestational. So you're type 2 on insulin. So just go back to keto. If, if, if you feel like carnivore is not, not working for you, just go back to keto. Keep Stay very low-carb keto. That'll, I mean, you've lost 30 pounds. I guarantee you your A1Cs come down. Just keep doing very, very low-carb keto, less than 10 or 20 total grams of carbs a day, and you'll reverse your type 2 diabetes. You'll get completely off the insulin. Um, last few announcements? Yes. 
I just posted my five year ketoversary. One of, I'm going to do a few actually, but five things that I've changed on my channel. So if you want to see that, yes, I have been eating this way five years. He's been eating this way longer. It's and crazy. we haven't died. It's crazy. Uh, so go watch that video if you're interested to see what I've changed over the past five years. Uh, he's got a video coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow about, about the five modern inventions that are killing you slowly. Oh my. Going to be posted tomorrow by lunchtime. Check it out. All right. All right, guys. Uh, join the community if you want to join the challenge or you just want some extra yep. Nisha and Ken time. You know. See, like tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're going to be live inside the group. But if you're not part of the group, you'll have to wait till Monday night. And I don't want you to have to wait. I hate that. <laughs> but I don't if want that's you what you want to do, then that's fine. That's we'll fine, see yeah. you Monday. Yeah. All right, guys. You got anything to say? Love you, Mina. Oh, that's so sweet. Bye. Happy birthday.